Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how to make four different designs for this amazing beach macarons. These macarons are filled with a delicious shortbread buttercream. The full recipe for these macarons can be found on my blog and I'll be using the Swiss method. Please subscribe and give this video a like if you've learned anything from it. Thank you for watching! We'll start by making the macaron better. So here I'm just sifting the almond flour and powdered sugar together. It's always important to leave everything ready before starting. I also like to wipe my baking sheets with vinegar, weigh all the ingredients and leave all the piping bags ready to go. Place a bowl over a pan with barely simmering water. Add sugar and egg white powder to the bowl. Egg white powder is optional, you don't have to use it. It really depends on your climate and a bunch of other things. So here I'm going to whisk the sugar and the egg white powder together. If you don't do this, the egg white powder is going to clump up once you add the fresh egg whites in. Now let's add the egg whites and whisk until the sugar has completely melted. It should only take a couple of minutes. You can test by touching the mixture and if you don't feel any sugar granules, you can just remove it from the heat. Here I'm wiping down the bottom of the bowl so none of the water will fall into the mixer when we transfer the syrup. Now we're going to transfer the syrup to the bowl of a mixer. With the whisk attachment, start whisking the syrup on low, the speed 2 of the KitchenAid for about 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, I'm going to increase the speed to 4 and let the meringue whip for another couple of minutes here. Now I'm going to finish whipping my meringue on speed 6 for about 10 minutes or so. Some people like to whip their meringue at a higher speed and some people like to do it at a slower speed. I know of people who whip their whole meringue for a long time on speed 4, and it does take a little while. And other people like a faster speed, it all depends. Experiment with different speeds to find out how it affects your meringue. Generally, a faster speed is going to add a lot of air bubbles to the meringue way too fast, which, which can create unstable meringue or hollow shells, which is why I like to stay at a medium speed for the most part. Continue to watch the meringue whip to avoid over whipping. Once the egg whites get glossy and you start seeing streaks formed by the whisk, it might be time to start checking. We're going to whip until stiff peaks have been achieved. When you pull the whisk up, the peak should be shooting straight up, with maybe a slight bend at the top. And also when you look on the bottom of the meringue, it should have some nice, soft, defined waves. Pour the sifted powdered sugar and almond flour into the stiff meringue and start folding with a spatula. Fold the dry ingredients with the meringue just until you see no more dry ingredients. As soon as that happens, stop stirring and divide the batter between two different bowls. First, I'm going to show you the blue and the yellow macarons. Leave the other bowl covered while you work with this one. For the blue collar, I used sky blue and also a little bit of wedge wood by a Mary Collar. Stir until the perfect consistency is achieved. The batter should be flowing slowly and effortlessly off the spatula. And you should be able to pick up some batter with a spatula and draw several frigates with the batter that's flowing without having the batter break up. And even after the batter breaks up, it should still continue to flow off the spatula slowly. Once the batter achieves the perfect consistency, transfer it to the piping bag and secure the top with a tie so that the batter doesn't escape while piping and also to keep the batter from drying out while you work with the remaining batter. For the yellow batter, I'm just adding a couple of drops of gold gel food coloring by AmeriColor. We're going to do the same as we did before and fold the batter until the perfect consistency is achieved.
transfer the yellow batter to a piping bag. I left the piping bags for the yellow and the blue batter without a tip, so that we can combine both bags inside this larger piping bag that is lined with a round tip. Place the two bags inside of it, and then we can begin to pipe. Place the bag 90 degrees over the center of each circle template. Apply pressure to release the batter, and then pull it up, flicking slightly at the top. After piping the shells, tap the trays against the counter or against the palm of your hands to release any air bubbles and also use a toothpick to pop any remaining air bubbles from the surface of the shells. Since the flavor of these macarons is shortbread buttercream, also feel free to sprinkle some crumbled shortbread on top of the macarons. Now we're going to let the macarons dry. I had some leftover of the blue batter, so I decided to just pipe some mini macarons because I always love having mini macarons for my pictures and they're just fun to eat and also fun to make. Tap the tray against the counter or against the palm of your hands to release any air bubbles. And now we're gonna let this rest also. Here I'm transferring my silicone mat to this other tray because it just works better for my oven to use this tray. My oven has some heat distribution issues. So I really like to use this tray that doesn't have any tall rims because that allows for the air to circulate and to, for the heat to be distributed more evenly between the macarons. I'm also going to do the same thing with the small macarons and transfer them to a different baking sheet, the one that has no rims. So now that the macarons are dry to the touch, I can bake them in my oven. I place two pizza stones on the bottom of my oven to help keep the temperature more stable and to minimize fluctuations. Because like I told you, my oven is very inconsistent and the temperature just shoots up and down. Here I'm rotating the trays halfway through baking because if I don't do that, my macarons come out lopsided. Not everybody has to do that with their macarons. I baked the mini macarons for about 13 minutes and the larger macarons for about 20 minutes. If you're not gonna fill your macarons right away, you can always store them in an airtight container in the fridge for a few days. Now let's make the next design, the dark blue and turquoise macaron shells. I used the French Blue Master Elite Powder from the Sugar Art for this one. I added a little bit too much. I wanted the, the tone to be a little bit lighter, but that's okay, it still came out super beautiful. When you're using the powders from the Sugar Art, you really only need a little bit. If you add too much, it's just going to be very, very vibrant. Here, we're also going to stir the batter until the perfect consistency is achieved. Look how beautifully it's flowing off the spatula. And let's transfer the batter to a piping bag. Now for the second batter, we're going to use Hawaiian blue, which came out looking emerald, but that's okay. I liked the color. Once both batters are ready, you can add both piping bags to another larger piping bag lined with a round tip. And just like we did before, we're going to pipe the macarons. You may notice that the first macarons you pipe are going to be just one predominant color. But as you continue to pipe, both colors are going to start to show through.
tap the shears against the counter or against the palm of your hands to release any air bubbles and use a toothpick to pop any remaining air bubbles from the surface of the macarons. And then I'm going to let them dry and I'm going to do the same as I did before and transfer my silicone mat to another baking sheet that doesn't have any rinse. And we're going to bake it in the oven for about 20 minutes. Now the next design is my favorite. It has pink, coral, and blue colors. For the blue, I also added French blue just like I did on the previous macarons, but I added just a tiny little bit this time. And the blue is super soft and super cute. We're gonna do the same process as we did before, but this time we have three colors. For the pink batter, I used lilac from the Sugar Art. Just like we did with all the other batters, stir until the perfect consistency is achieved and transfer it to a piping bag. For the orange batter, I used coral, which is also a powder by the Sugar Art. Now here the procedure is the same, though we have three piping bags this time instead of two. We're just going to place the piping bags inside of this larger piping bag. And we're going to pipe the shells. Here I'm using my smaller tray because I'm going to show you how to bake the macarons in my countertop oven. Notice that I'm using the tray upside down and that's because the rims are going to affect the macarons. So I like to bake the macarons in rimless baking sheet. So this way the heat can be evenly distributed throughout the macarons. And unlike with my large oven, these macarons I can bake them straight after piping on my mini oven. To be able to tell if the macarons are done baking, you should try to move a macaron and if it doesn't feel jiggly, it's done baking. You can also touch the top and it shouldn't feel too soft. Now last but not least, we have our final design. Now this is just one color. We are going to dye the batter with Wedgwood food coloring by Americolor. Stir until the batter comes to the perfect consistency, and this time we are not dividing the batter, we're making just one color. And to do the effect on the shells, we're going to brush some food coloring inside the piping bag. So here I'm just brushing some lines of blue food coloring on the inside of the piping bag. And then we're going to transfer the batter to the piping bag. And we can begin piping. When you pipe, you notice that some of the batter is going to be colorful in this really beautiful wave effect. I'm also baking this without resting them and I'm going to bake them in my little countertop oven. Now let's make the shortbread buttercream. Here I'm going to process some shortbread cookies into a fine powder. Now we're going to use this powder to make the buttercream. Beat the butter with an electric mixer until creamy and fluffy. Now we can add the shortbread powder to the bowl and mix. Finally, let's add some powdered sugar and also a little bit of milk. The milk is gonna help the mixture come together. Once the buttercream is smooth and creamy, you can stop whipping and transfer it to a piping bag.
Now we can pipe the filling on the bottom shell of the macarons. You can also top the macarons with some more crumbled shortbread cookies. I had this idea because of my friend Barb from Sweet Mac Shop. She loves putting crumbles and all that stuff on her macarons and it always looks delicious. Let the macarons mature in the fridge overnight before serving and enjoying. I really hope you enjoyed today's recipe and all the four different designs that I made for this beach macarons. For the full recipe, you can go to my blog, paisantacos.com. The link is going to be down below in the description box, as well as the measurements for the ingredients. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.